Welcome back, Hacks Maniacs. You know, all I wanted to do was save time and grow more food, but I made a huge mistake, and it turns out I wasted even more time, labor, sweat, and money, and I don't want you to make the same mistake. We decided last year to install drip irrigation to our raised garden beds. After a ton of research, I went with a system that I thought would be the easiest and most cost effective to install, but I was wrong. Honestly, the main reason I chose this system was kits were available that were already planned for the number of raised beds we have. And I hate trying to figure out what basically equates to plumbing. This is gonna save us at least an hour a day of standing out here getting eaten up by sand gnats, which I'm doing right now, while we watered the garden. And drip irrigation is better for the plants because water sitting on the leaves for too long can cause fungi spores to infect and cause leaf diseases. That reminds me. Why did the mushroom get invited to all the parties? because he was a fun guy. <clears throat> anyway, check this fun guy out. What is this? This is weird. This looks like bubble gum or spray foam. It's like brain. Yeah. You're delicious. Bro. <laughs> but I digress. We trenched and we trenched and we trenched. Now there are lots of different ways to run drip irrigation, but this system uses half inch lines for the main delivery and then transitions into quarter inch lines at the bed. This is where one of the problems starts, but it's not the only problem. The first unexpected issue was that setting the same timer and amount of water delivered to each bed caused the Goldilocks paradigm. Yeah, you haven't heard of that? Well, some beds were getting enough water, some beds were getting too much water, and some beds were just right. We thought we could make some adjustments to the length of the drip line in each garden bed and our problems would be solved. But again, we were wrong. I was concerned initially about these quarter inch lines being outside the bed. That makes them susceptible to getting hit by the weed trimmer or the lawnmower. And some viewers commented on this too. Well, guess what? That has happened a couple times, but that hasn't been the only problem with the lines. These connectors that transition from the half inch line to the quarter inch line and quarter inch line solid line to drip line, they just break on their own all the time. And it didn't take long for it to happen either. You can see some of them break at the top and some of them break at the bottom. We have this graveyard of broken lines out here now because within just a few months, we were unable to use the system at all. So now we have all this line run, but we're back to square one. Well, sort of. The good news is I already ran the main PVC line under the ground to connect the drip system too. I also had the half inch irrigation line ran to each raised bed. But I think the best way to fix this problem is just running one inch PVC to each bed and skipping most of the original drip system altogether. And so after another trip to Home Depot and spending an hour looking at the plumbing supplies because I hate figuring this stuff out, here I am trenching again. This would be a good time to point out that if you're planning on building a raised bed garden, run your irrigation system before you set and fill the beds. It will make it much easier on you. Now to refigure out what I've already figured out. Hey, I went ahead and got me a PVC cutter. I've never had luck with these, but we'll see this time. Maybe it's my lucky day. They had these giant, well, I wouldn't call it giant exactly, but anyway, these 25 packs of various connectors. It saves you a bunch of money. Purple, very purple. <laughs> Stupendous. Pro tip, I'm, I'm not a pro, but I, I play one on TV anyway. Whenever you lay down your PVC, whenever you're working in dirt, if you put a cap, get off that stupid cap. If you put a cap on there, That'll keep dirt from going down in there whenever you're working on it. And uh, you know, you don't want dirt in the lines whenever you finally get water running through it. So keep a cap on there, you know, until you get to that end and then, you know, anyway. Second pro tip, try to keep the fire ants off of the pipe. Also out of the area you're working on. All right, let's see how well they work. Nice. Perfect. La -da -dee, la -da -da. Ooh, lots of glue, a little too much, a little too much. Reunited and it feels so... <clears throat> no, I don't think I have the permission to use that song, actually. 
starting to rain, so I'm under the gun now to get finished. I mean, the weatherman said 50-50. He was right. Might or it might not. What's that say? Rain or shine. Medium PVC cement. I anticipated such an event happening. Kim has put this bed to rest, so I just gotta move this cardboard out of the way. I've got a T that stays one inch, then it goes into a 90 that transfers from one inch to three quarter inch. And I've got that, and I'm gonna drop that down in here. Oh, in there, man. So close. Come on. At this point, obviously the sand gnats have become oblivious to the fact that I'm wearing bug spray because they are just totally ignoring it. I don't know if you can see them swarming around here, but there's just hundreds of them. Before I glue these on, I'm going to put some tape on there. These are the flip on to thread on adapter so that I can put the hose bib on. But if I put this on first and then tighten the hose bib down, the hose bib might not be at the right angle. So I'm gonna put this on, put the hose bib on first, and then we can slip it on to where it needs to be. I've just realized, um, yeah, I don't want that cold, <laughs> that. See, I've already forgotten, I mean, forgotten since I've been at the store already how I plan this I think I, I think I need to do that it's got to cut the water off oh there's the rest of that water Yeah, nice, neat job there, Adam. Let's see if it works. Nice, nice. Let's check the other one. All right, here we go. So now that we have a faucet at every bed, I'm just kidding, I have 19 more to go. We'll probably put drip tape on here instead of the regular drip line. I don't know, that's Kim's thing. And she may even want to put a timer on each one of these. And speaking of water, how do you know that the water you're drinking in your house isn't poisoning you? Watch this video right here, and I'll show you how to make sure the water that you drink is safe for you and your family. See you next time.